Higher Education Minister Naledi Pandor has obtained a PhD from the University of Pretoria following a journey that saw her defend her proposal. Pandor's research topic was titled The Contested Meaning of Transformation in Higher Education in Post-Apartheid South Africa. She joins us now to tell us about this and other issues around this. Thank you so much for joining us, Minister. Firstly, congratulations. Thank you very much, Patisa, and good evening to the viewers. How difficult was it convincing your supervisors on this particular research topic, and why? Well, um, it, I began with a very different topic in mind, and uh, part of the uh, process of uh, the journey of a PhD is to actually engage uh, with your peers, with your uh, supervisor, as well as other academics, and discuss what you're trying to do and whether, you know, the uh, title or thoughts you have are worthy of, of a pursuit. I was very keen um, to look at more the, the sort of policy arena and the whole um, area of uh, impact uh, of policy. But as I delved into the subject, uh, this issue of transformation kept rearing its head. And uh, as we discussed the possibility of investigating it, it was clear that we're not talking about meaning. We're talking about meanings and particularly contestation uh, around the meanings of transformation. So eventually we settled on investigating that. Mm. And, uh, you know, I received tremendous uh, support from uh, my supervisor, Professor Sunule at the University of Pretoria, and, of course, from the other uh, uh, students who were uh, PhD students. I must say many of them were much younger than me. So sometimes I thought the task very daunting. Uh, but uh, we had a wonderful group uh, and we you know, would meet and discuss where we are and really share ideas and support each other. So did you borrow from the existing academic text? Because I understand that previously it's been seen as something that's been much more complex when you talk about transformation, especially in higher education in South Africa, open-ended even? I certainly did. Uh, I, lo I looked at a, a wide body uh, of literature, but in addition, uh, I decided to, to gather a primary data. So I, I conducted a series of interviews uh, with a range of individuals, some uh, policymakers, others uh, a former civil servant, senior uh, management in, in higher education, and then even student leaders, um, to try and really uh, get a sense of, you know, what is their meaning uh, of this concept transformation, and also look at what did it mean prior to us achieving democracy, and has there been any change as to that meaning then uh, uh, with the experience of you know, 24 or so years of, of higher education uh, policy. And it was very fascinating. So, Professor. Uh, that comparison. So, Professor Faisal Rizvi has uh, congratulated you for a thesis that is insightful but is more nuanced in its understanding of South African higher education and theoretical issues. So, what was different from what you presented, what you put on offer? Well, one of the things I did was to look at other uh, uh, countries, uh, other regions of the world, both developing and developed, and tried to examine whether they have uh, uh, notions that are similar to our own. And I discovered that we're all grappling uh, uh, with a very complex set uh, of issues. And this is why I uh, made use of a, a framework which really allowed me to look at the global the national and the institutional or local uh, domains of higher education practice. And I think it was that comparative, that nuancing and the various voices that added uh, a, a different dimension to what I was looking at. And mm -hmm. the notion of contestation, while I wasn't implying uh, that people contest each other, but certainly uh, the various perspectives they hold uh, around this concept transformation indicates very, very uh, uh, disparate views. And, and sometimes we take it at face value. 
of numbers, but actually it's much, much more complex. So let's talk about that. those complexities, Dr. Pando. And I'm thinking in the South African context, you mm -hmm. having been involved with the hashtag Fees Must Fall movement and the ramifications thereof, the very word of transformation implies change, but some would argue that in some cases the evolution would also mean annihilation, and that would be what annihilation of the apartheid infrastructure. Well, certainly a, a part of it is that we are still living very much with the apartheid framework uh, in higher education, and even uh, when we create new institutions, uh, we appear to appropriate. Uh, what has existed before. So the whole notion of decolonization kept creeping in. And uh, what, you know, I found was that, uh, you know, while the same concept, transformation, is being used, but people are talking of gender equity. Uh, they're referring to the fact that uh, while in Brazil they may fund uh, publicly uh, private higher education, those private institutions do not offer postgraduate study, and they're not accessed by the poorest. They also don't offer engineering and so on. So these exclusions uh, keep perpetuating uh, uh, themselves, and thus what it suggests as policymakers, we need to have a much broader approach to policy uh, in order to address all the uh, inadequacies that are prevalent uh, in a system where uh, higher education is no longer really a, a root for, for social justice. So if you could take us through what goes on in your mind or what's been going through your mind, you being Minister of Higher Education at the moment and what you're positing in your theses, what is possible and what isn't. Was there a conflict there? Did you find that ideologically you would like to see some things that from a practical policy perspective you don't think are possible now here in South Africa? Well, firstly, I think um, as, as certainly as Minister and probably as Department, we need to develop a far more nuanced uh, uh, understanding of how we may uh, uh, shape policy. I think sometimes we uh, uh, believe that resources are sufficient to achieve change, but I think we have to be far more steady uh, uh, than we are at the moment. Uh, so I, I do think uh, we really uh, have to, to, to reflect on the interventions that we've made. There are many, many good things, and a lot of the literature does indicate the progress, but, you know, as you read about the progress, there's always this caveat, and, and that's where I think we need to focus. How do we address the caveats, the areas that are not being addressed, the buts uh, that remain as huge blocks uh, on the system of higher education in South Africa, and they cannot be neglected if we are to achieve the true purpose of higher education. And do you foresee yourselves having done this, then working with other political parties to infuse their ideas, their suggestions on how to achieve what we'd consider desirable transformation in post-democratic South Africa? Well, I think that's up to really, uh, uh, you know, the readers of the thesis. They will determine whether there's, uh, you know, any aspect that they may regard as, as useful. Um, I, you know, do not believe, I think what I was looking at was really broadening my own uh, understanding of this particular area from the perspective of intellectual scrutiny, but also looking at our own uh, uh, policies and how far uh, we have progressed uh, uh, with respect to the policies we've adopted. Um, so I think, uh, you know, it's for us to, for me to keep going back to the thesis, and of course, uh, to learn even more uh, uh, than I've done up to this point. But I've certainly found uh, the process uh, extremely intriguing. I also understand now all the challenges that a PhD student goes through. Mm. And going forward, you mentioned the fact that you believe that there still needs to be more looked into on the subject. Some would say mm -hmm. that South Africa has had a very unique transformation journey, what would you suggest we look more into? <laughs> Read the thesis, chapter 7. <laughs> <laughs> it will give you some ideas, and I hope that uh, 
you know, colleagues are going to read it and, and take an interest in it. I do make uh, some suggestions of areas that I think require further study. Uh, maybe some of it I would take on myself, uh, uh, should I find the time. Uh, uh, but uh, I think there are lots, lots of areas. For example, one of the things I did spend quite a lot of time on uh, was trying to understand the experience of students who are non-traditional students, mainly black and women, uh, uh, in our universities. And some of what uh, one discovered is fairly horrifying. It's in the literature, but it's shocking that some of that's happening in our universities. So um, I think we need to pay more attention. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Higher Education Minister Naledi Pando, who, as I mentioned earlier on, has uh, just received her doctorate on what is said to be a very difficult subject by some, and that is looking at uh, transformation in South Africa. Now moving on to other news.